Hey everyone, something a little bit different today. We're here at a Tesla supercharging station. Excuse the noise because these things are running. It's kind of dark in here in this underground parking lot. But we are charging not a Tesla. We're actually charging a Polestar today. And if you're wondering, hey, can my non-Tesla EV charge at a supercharger as well? Well, the answer is yes and kind of no. There are some limitations, there are some variables, and you may even need some extra equipment. So we're gonna get into all of that today so that way you can manage your expectations next time if you wanna actually charge at a supercharger with your non-Tesla. Let's get to it. Thanks to the growing support of the NACS standard, which is the North American Charging Standard, more and more non-Tesla EVs can now charge at the supercharging stations. However, there are a few things to be aware of. First off, is your vehicle supported? So currently, some of the supported brands are ones like Ford, General Motors, Mercedes-Benz, Lucid, Rivian, Nissan, Hyundai, Kia, Genesis. Now, there will be more coming down the road, but Currently right now, those are just some of them. Next thing you'll have to figure out, do you need an adapter? Because you will need an NACS charge port for that supercharger to plug into. Most non-Teslas don't have NACS charge ports at this time. Some are coming out, like the Ionic 9 that we just tested did have an NACS. Um, Ionic 5 does not, has CCS. This Polestar doesn't have it either, the CCS. So what do you need? You need an adapter. Where do you get it from? Well, you can either get it from the manufacturer or you can go third party. Uh, and certain manufacturers may have a, some sort of an incentive or a program. For instance, Ford had a program at one time, I believe the deadline has gone and passed now where they would actually send you one for free. Uh, but if you don't get, if you don't qualify for that, then you're gonna have to buy one. Uh, so I have a third party and as well, show it to you right now. Here's the third party adapter here. This one's from Lectron. I've got a couple other adapters from them. So they're really heavy duty. And as you can see here, there is a CCS that you would have on your car. You plug that, that goes into your car. And on this end would be the Tesla supercharger right there. And that's it. You just plug that in. Now be aware, okay, this here, this is a lever here. And this locks onto your charge port. And the Tesla one, it's not as obvious, and it took me a while. I, I was kind of scared, actually. I was using this uh, on the very first time, and I couldn't pull the, the, the Tesla supercharger out. I'm like, great. I, 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 my adapter is stuck on here. And then I realized there is a lever, and it's quite hard. The spring is, is it's a pretty tough spring. So you got to depress that, and then the Tesla supercharger will just pop right out. Uh, so that's all you do, it's, it's super easy. So on this test charge that you can see here, uh, this was at a max 250 kilowatt supercharger. Very easy to do. All you have to do is download the Tesla app. That's one thing, you, the first thing you need to do because they need to have your information on how to bill you. So you gotta give them a form of payment as well. Uh, after that, you're going to select you know, I'm looking for a supercharger. It will show you where they are and how many are available. Uh, on, in this case, I drove to that. It's underground, a little bit dark. I'm sorry about that. Uh, and um, and you're just going to back up and, and you're going to select which supercharger and plug in and hit start charging and you are off to the races. Uh, uh, on our test, we got 125 kilowatt max on this Polestar. This is able to do over 200 kilowatts of fast charging, but it's pretty well limited, I'm sure, from the supercharger itself. So 125 kilowatts. So yeah, we were on there for about 30 minutes and it was time to unplug. I hit stop charging on my phone app and that's it, unplugged. Remember to hit that little hook there and that's it, your build on your credit card. And yeah, uh, one thing I wanted to check out though is um, the heat, was was this very hot at all? And it was not. It was essentially just like ambient room temperature of where we were. The cable had more warmth than, than this did. So no issue with any type of heat at all. Now what's the advantage of using a third party opposed to an, uh, um, a manufacturer's adapter? Of course, number one is price. 
So uh, yeah, a lot of times they can be a lot less money. And this thing is heavy duty, by the way. It's, it's got some weight to it. So be aware though, if you already have a Tesla charger, let's say in your garage, or you go to a hotel and they have destination Tesla chargers, this adapter will not work. You will need a separate, a different one than that. We actually have one of those adapters as well. And yeah, it may be worth getting one if you already have a Tesla charger at home and maybe you know someone else in the household gets a non-Tesla vehicle with CCS that you can get one of those other adapters. They're actually less money than this Vortec. So what's the advantages of using the supercharger network? Well, number one, it's the most extensive fast charging network anywhere around in North America for sure. So that just gives you so many more options, especially if you're doing road trips. Uh, where you know fast chargers can actually be very very you know scarce or even if there are uh, if they're plentiful a lot of times de de depending on peak times and peak times of the year they can be very very busy so you want to expand and have more options and that's what the supercharger is going to do so that's one of the biggest benefits of the supercharging network number two you know not only are there a lot of them but on the most part they seem like they're the most reliable uh, charging solution out there and most of the time they're all working and that's not this the case you'll find in a lot of other fast chargers uh, and when you go to a supercharger a lot of times there's multiple like we're we're here at a fast charger here this is not even about very quick this is a 50 kilowatt charger behind me right now and you can only charge one car at a time uh, you know, the other ones may have up, you know, up to six but that's pretty rare uh, these days so just love the fact that there's just so many superchargers out there. So charging is fairly seamless. It's actually very, very easy to do. I was very surprised. Uh, but are there any negatives? There are a few. Uh, number one is that it can be costly. Uh, so, you know, convenience has a cost and it has a price sometimes. Uh, so it, depending on time of day, they actually have peak rates where it can get very expensive and there may be cheaper alternatives out there for even level three fast charging. So make sure that you check. But, and one thing you really need to be aware of though is where your charge port location is on your car. You see, superchargers were built for Teslas. All Tesla charge ports are on the left rear. Hence, they made the cable just long enough to reach the charge port. If your charge port is not the left rear, like even this Polestar is in the left rear, which is great, but if it's not there, you will have an issue uh, because it will not reach over to the right side like our Ionic 5, meaning you will have to park in a, in, in a stall adjacent to the one dedicated to that charger, meaning you take up two spots which opens up a whole other thing. Number one is that it's not cool. You're, you know, people will not be very impressed with you taking up two spots. Number two is I ran into a spot where there, where there were, it wasn't full, but there were only single spots throughout the charging stations and I need two spots. I will not be able to actually charge my Ionic 5. Okay, we've just arrived at our next closest supercharger. Now I've just realized, okay, so there are two stalls open, however, both stalls have cards on either side of them, meaning I can't reach my port because my port is on the right side where the Tesla ports are on the left side. Oh, is there one over there? There may be one here. There may be a Tesla charger on this side. Okay, there are some extras, but still, this will still not allow me to actually charge. They are all used up. And the ones that are open, I'd have to be on the other side. So I will actually have to go look for another charger or wait. And that could be stressful depending on if you need the charger or not. So I just really want you to be aware of that. I don't want to scare you, but I just want to like, once again, manage your expectations. So that way when you get to your, you know, try it, try it out with your adapter, for instance, and you're like, oh no, what am I going to do? Well, now you can kind of plan for that, you know, so, or if you don't know how to take off the adapter now, I can, it's that little lever there. Um, but yeah, 
as time goes on, some of these problems will be solved. For instance, um, they, they will actually have longer cables in the new charging stations, the new versions of them. So that's one thing that will be uh, solved. And also, there will be more available as well, because currently right now, if you actually click on the, char the supercharging map, a lot of superchargers are not available to non-Tesla um, charging. So only, only certain ones, you have to be aware of that. They didn't open up the entire uh, network to non-Teslas. In time though, they are building more and they will open up more. So that is gonna get better. But once again, just wanted to manage your expectations so you're not thinking, hey, I've got access to 50,000 chargers now. That is not the case, all right? So be aware of that. So if you have any other questions about charging your non-Tesla vehicle at a supercharger, leave them down there in the comments section or if you have any other suggestions. I will also leave a link in the video description uh, for this adapter here from Lectron if in case you want to uh, buy your own for your car. And um, yeah, that's it for today. Hope to see you on the next video. Ciao.